Hey everybody, my name is Patrick and I'm the founder of Fieldwork Software. In this tutorial video for DisplayWorks, we're gonna go over all of the kind of basic ideas that you need to actually make this operate, to display it in a stadium and to get your money's worth out of it. So first of all, I apologize. I'm just getting over the flu and I still have a little bit of congestion and my neighbors are getting their roof done. So you might hear some very soft thuds in the background every so often. Uh, but this video is too important to kind of wait on, basically. Uh, the software is going live later today or tomorrow morning, and this is going to be a really important video for people that have never used scoreboard solutions before. So if you have used another scoreboard software product, then this video might be a little bit of a retread, but if you haven't, then I'm going to give you all the information you need to know as far as what you actually need to make DisplayWorks operate. And that includes the kind of laptop that you would actually run DisplayWorks on, why you would want to run it on a separate laptop, uh, the things you're going to need from the programs that can input data to DisplayWorks, and then actually some talk about LED boards in general and how to make them work. So let's start out with the laptop. Uh, first of all, it can run on anything Windows 7 and newer. That's, that's basically it. I uh, know it runs great on my new Asus here, which is super powerful, but it runs fine on this Dell, which I got from a refurbishment website. It's like 10 years old. Um, it's a business spec laptop that's uh, otherwise really not that useful. Um, it does have an RJ45 port, which is important because DisplayWorks is running on a network, and it has an HDMI out, which you'll need to send a signal to an LED board that we'll talk about later. Now, as far as the actual inputs that DisplayWorks is getting data from, uh, there are five at launch, and three of them have no other concerns for it. So Eagle Eye Pro, FieldWorks, and Meet Pro all have the ability to output to DisplayWorks uh, basically by default. You just follow the instructions, make sure that the right ports are set up and you'll be good to go. So if you're using Hi-Tech Meet Manager, you will need to have the alphanumeric scoreboard interface, I believe. Uh, now that's a small optional extra, but it is necessary to communicate to basically all scoreboard products. And if you're using Finish Links, uh, it is super simple, but you'll need two things. One, you will need the LSS file, which is a scoreboard script that we provide on fieldworks.app. You go to downloads and it's right there. Uh, but you will also need the Netcom plugin. Uh, it is a another additional extra, and if you need it, uh, please follow the link in the description below to TRXC Timing. Contact Denise and tell them Patrick sent you for Netcom, and you'll be good to go. As far as how you actually operate DisplayWorks, uh, basically you set it up and then you let it do its thing. Uh, it is a what you see is what you get style program. So it's taking information from these different sources, you know, Finish Links or Meet Pro or whatever, and then displaying it on screen. Uh, in DisplayWorks, you were basically just setting up the options as far as how many lines you want to display, how you want the board to actually look, but all of the work is being done because it's been sent from another program. I hope that makes sense. You are also going to want to run this program on its own laptop. It is not something that's very power intensive or CPU intensive or anything. It's just that what you are showing on the laptop screen is what is actually being displayed on the LED boards. We'll come back to that and that's going to be probably the most difficult thing to kind of understand if you're brand new to LED boards, but that's how it's operating. It is creating a screen on your regular screen and then it is duplicating that screen onto the LED board that you're displaying on. It is important to note that I'm a staunch believer in kind of separation of concerns. So it's not that you need to run one program at any given time on one laptop as far as your timing gear goes, but you're not gonna to wanna to run a display program on the same laptop that you're trying to time on or even do meet management stuff on uh, because you'd be restricting your screen space. So if you are running uh, high tech or Meet Pro, you would want to run that on one computer. You would run, run be, be running Finish Links or Eagle Eye Pro on another computer, and then DisplayWorks would run on a third computer. Um, it really does make sense when you get it into your workflow. You get a switch that can handle the number of inputs, and then you just make sure that everything is communicating properly. Now, as far as additional setup of the computer you're running DisplayWorks on, uh, it certainly would not hurt to set up a static IP address on your DisplayWorks computer. Uh, and if you kind of don't know how to do that or are unfamiliar with it, there's a link in the description down below to another video of mine where I cover kind of basic networking ideas. 
Now, the truth is that you do not need to set a static IP address for HiTech or Eagle Eye Pro, uh, but you will need to set a static IP address for Meet Pro and Finish Links and also for Fieldworks. And as I said, even though you don't have to set a static IP address for Eagle Eye Pro or for HiTech, it doesn't hurt. Now, occasionally in testing, we did see some sort of issue with when it comes to boot order, particularly with Eagle Eye and HiTech, which are using, using the same protocol to actually communicate. Um, we found best that it seems like you need to load HiTech or Eagle Eye, then load DisplayWorks, and then set, set up the communication, and you'll be good to go. Now, when it comes to the LED boards, that's where you got lots of options, and that's where things become very, very complex. So we're gonna break it down. We're gonna talk about first in-stadium scoreboards, so the kind of big video boards that you, you're starting to see at stadiums everywhere. And then we're gonna talk about individual panels. And they're both similar, but not quite the same. Now, DisplayWorks was originally designed to work predominantly on those gigantic display boards. Uh, now, I have worked very hard to kind of make it so that you can run it on smaller displays, and we'll talk about that in a bit, but for right now, we're just talking about those big giant display boards. Now, all these boards are made by roughly the same few manufacturers, uh, Dactronics, Nevco, Fairplay, Watchfire. Uh, all of these are kind of LED companies, basically, at this point in time. Uh, but they all have slightly different ways to actually get information up onto the board. And unfortunately, that's kind of where the path of DisplayWorks support ends. Um, I'm going to give you some advice that I have used over the years because uh, all these boards are slightly different. So um, if you're unfamiliar with the board, getting to the location early or maybe going beforehand uh, so that you can maybe work with the actual board owner's te technical person uh, who is hopefully familiar with getting information up onto the board is important. Now, when I'm trying to explain how uh, this actually operates to the technical person of an institution, I like to say like it would be like attempting to show a game console or a DVD player up on the board. Uh, you know, I have a device that has an HDMI out. I will often have to then bring it through a Blackmagic HDMI to SDI converter and then an SDI cable to a some sort of input or camera input onto the board. There are a few places that are great where you just show up and they hand you an HDMI cable and it just works. Uh, sometimes you need to play around with the actual resolution of the laptop itself. Uh, but all of these things, like there's just, there's lots of little ways to deal with it. And I've definitely spent a lot of time with uh, support people who have, you know, from the boards themselves. Hopefully, uh, when it comes to setting up your board, you can get in contact with the, the whoever is, is the go-to person at the school and they can help you out with it. And hopefully that person hasn't left after learning how to be trained on, on all of it. Uh, but that's why working in advance is really important. Uh, we have a few places where I know every year I'll be going the day before or a couple of days before just to make sure that things are dialed in so that I can just come in, plug it in and be good to go. Because the last thing I really want to worry about on a day when we're actually timing and running and everything is trying to fiddle around and make sure that the board is actually displaying properly. Now, as I said, none of this is actually to do with DisplayWorks. All of this is on the back end of the laptop that's running DisplayWorks. And another question I will often get is, how do I get that signal to where it needs to be? If I'm timing from the field and I'm sending up a signal to the a laptop in the press box, which has all the software and the hardware to get the in input up onto the board, I am using a nano station, uh, Ubiquiti nano stations. These things are fantastic. They send signals all over the place and they do a great job. So this is what I'm typically using. And there's been no stadium that I found that I cannot send a signal all the way across it. Now, when it comes to smaller LED boards, uh, you have a couple of options there too. Uh, one, you can buy from an importer, somebody that's already imported these and has usually set them up in a somewhat reasonable way. And all you need to do is purchase it. It shows up, you plug stuff in and you're good to go. Um, if you want that, uh, Finished Results offers this exact thing. I'll leave a link in the description down below. Uh, they will sell you two quite large panels. If you are a little bit more adventurous, you can go and try to get your panels yourself from AliExpress, which I actually did a few years ago and had a good experience with it. Uh, but I, I had to get the panels. I had to make sure that I was communicating about the uh, the brand of sending and receiving cards. I went with Novastar, and then I had to get the Novastar boxes that actually send the signal. And then the, they had to install the receiving cards, which actually receive it and then process it. 
So what's happening with these smaller boards is that the output from the computer is coming out to a box. That box is converting it into a proprietary style signal. That signal is being sent to the boards and it's being processed and then it's being displayed. It is being displayed in a one-to-one -one resolution scale. So uh, what you can actually see behind me here is this little box right here in the white. That is a one-to-one -one pixel ratio of, of the finished results uh, boards themselves, which are, I think, 144 by 144. So this is 144 tall and then 288 across. Uh, finished results will sell you two boards. So that's, that is the finished results board. And there's you can see maybe there's a little clock running in there. Um, but uh, these these are this is how it works. Uh, it's kind of complex. Uh, I've learned a lot myself over the years. Uh, unfortunately, I can't provide any support for it. Uh, all I can say is once everything gets to, to display works, you are on your own. But this video hopefully will help you tremendously in actually trying to get things to literally display. Uh, when it comes to it, as far as the concepts go, remember that DisplayWorks is a what you see is what you get style program. So this little white box, that is the screen that you would actually see all the information on and the size of the screen that you would see your information on on these smaller boards. So I hope that helps. Uh, you know, this video is releasing, I think, the day or the day before uh, we are going live with the software. So feel free to go buy the software. It's online, fieldworks.app. If you have any questions, feel free to leave it in the comments down below. If you're a purchaser of the software, please know that there is a Facebook group that should be the fastest way to get support and offer suggestions. Thank you. Take care.